What's up guys, Sean Nell Awani, SeanNell.com. And in today's video here, I wanna talk about the subject of training intensity. And just like the title says, ask you the question, are you truly training hard enough in the gym to maximize your total body gains? Um, it's a pretty simple question, but so many beginning lifters out there get so hung up on all these different aspects of their program, like exercise selection, uh, you know, number of sets, rep ranges, rest periods, training splits, all these things, and they forget or don't even understand the basic fact that training intensity itself, so the percentage of total effort you exert on each set, is actually the single most important baseline factor there is when it comes to building muscle and gaining strength because it's the underlying stimulus that actually sets those processes into motion in the first place. Now, before I jump into the video, um, if you do enjoy this content, make sure to hit the subscribe button below and click the little bell notification as well uh, because that way you'll be kept in the loop and notified anytime I upload a new video. So uh, all of those other training factors that I just mentioned are obviously important too. Um, and it's a combination of everything that you do in the gym that's gonna determine your overall progress. But when it all comes down to it, muscle growth is an evolutionary stress response and it's your body's way of adapting you to the environment. And in order for there to be enough incentive to actually change the body physiologically, that environmental stressor has to be strong enough. The body has to perceive that the demands of the environment um, exceed its current capability um, or at least exceed what it's currently optimized for. That's the message that you're trying to send your body anytime you train with weights. You're trying to say that the environment that you're in and the tasks that you're being faced with are right up near the limits of your current strength capacity or actually beyond them. That's what triggers the response. So if you're consistently performing tasks that are already well within your ability, meaning you're lifting a certain amount of weight for a certain number of reps that you can already do without a high level of exertion, there's no reason for your body to make any change. You can already do those tasks. So why would your body use up valuable energy and valuable resources to build new muscle tissue that it doesn't even need? Again, training intensity is the stimulus that sets the entire muscle building process into motion. Uh, progressive overload is what allows you to make continued gains from week to week. Uh, meaning that you're consistently increasing the workload in terms of weight and reps uh, over time. But in any single workout, the fact that you simply train hard enough to trigger an adaptive response, that's what really matters. And without that, nothing else in your program is gonna make any difference. So if you're just playing not training hard enough, then you're either gonna progress a bit, but not to the degree that you could be, um, or you won't progress at all. Or even worse, it could actually be counterproductive to your physique, uh, which I'll talk about here in a second. And I know that this might sound obvious to a lot of you, but to just as many people out there, it really isn't all that obvious. And there's so many lifters out there who just go to the gym, uh, they pick some exercises in a rep range, and then basically just go through the motions without really understanding what they're trying to do. Uh, the workouts are still somewhat challenging. They, uh, they feel the burn, they get a little pump going on. But without realizing it, they're still not training nearly close enough to their maximum ability to really trigger a significant muscle building response. Or what I also see is what I'd call selective intensity. And that's where people will train fairly hard, but only on certain lifts for the more uh, showy muscle groups. So like the chest or the arms, which also happen to be some of the least challenging muscles to train. Uh, but when it comes to hitting their really big muscle groups, um, the ones that make the biggest contribution to their overall physique, like their back and their legs, um, it's a much different story and they just don't exert the same percentage of effort. Now, I'm not saying that you need to get under the bar and lift with every ounce of strength until your eyeballs are popping out of their sockets on every set. Um, it is possible to train too hard as well. Um, you know, I don't recommend that you train to complete failure on every set or that you use um, high intensity methods like force reps, heavy negatives, um, rest pause, etc. at least not frequently, uh, because going too high with your intensity um, can lead to excessive overall stress and uh, excessive overall fatigue, and it can also increase your risk for injury as well. Um, training to failure on some sets, some of the time is fine, um, as long as your volume is adjusted for it. And uh, lower intensity, higher rep sets can also be used in some cases as well for certain purposes. Uh, but I think that on most sets, most of the time, a good solid guideline for the average lifter is to train about one to two reps short of concentric muscular failure, um, again, on the majority of your sets. So that basically just means that if going 100% all out and lifting with every ounce of strength until you couldn't get another rep no matter what, if doing that allowed you to get 10 reps with a certain weight, you'd stop at the eighth or ninth rep. So you wanna leave one to two reps in the tank for most sets. Um, that amount of intensity is high enough to trigger the body's muscle growth response, 
but also low enough to where you won't burn yourself out, meaning you can perform uh, more total volume to optimize your results and where you won't be putting excessive stress on your joints either. So if you haven't been making progress in the gym or at least not the progress that you feel you should be, sit down, take a look at your training plan, um, and that includes all muscle groups and all exercises, okay? Not just machine flies and dumbbell curls. And be honest with yourself and ask yourself if you're truly pushing yourself to that level of intensity on the majority of your sets. Because if you're training much below that, then you're not gonna build your physique up to its real potential. And like I mentioned in the beginning, it's not just that you won't build muscle as effectively as you could be, but it could actually be directly harmful to your physique if you're eating in a calorie surplus, but you aren't training hard enough. Again, you have to think about the basic logic of muscle growth here. You go to the gym, you put your muscles under stress to stimulate a growth response, and then you leave the gym and consume more calories and your body uses those extra calories to build new muscle. But uh, if your training intensity wasn't high enough during the workout and the growth response um, was weak as a result of that, then not only will you not gain very much new muscle because your body just doesn't have the incentive for it, but your body won't even need all of those extra calories you've been eating and so they won't have anywhere to go um, except to your fat stores. And this is one of the big reasons why some guys can go to the gym consistently over the course of a few months and then end up gaining mostly fat. It's because they're feeding their body um, with a bunch of extra calories that it doesn't even need since it has no incentive to use those calories for building muscle because the overall stress from the workout isn't high enough to fully trigger the growth response. And so those calories just get stored as fat. So the bottom line here, um, there are a lot of different factors that go into planning out a complete muscle building program, both in terms of training and nutrition, but basic training intensity is the stimulus that initiates the whole process. And without that, you're not gonna get the results you're after. And it's not just um, enough to train hard for chest and biceps. This includes compound leg training, compound back training. It includes everything. So take a look at your approach. Be honest with yourself uh, because you might discover that you could be doing more than you are right now. So thanks for watching, guys. Um, if you found this advice useful and you want to get a complete step-by-step -step roadmap that incorporates all the different factors you need to know to maximize your progress in terms of training, nutrition, and supplementation, then you can download my Body Transformation Blueprint by clicking here or by heading over to btblueprint.com using the link in the description box. Um, if you enjoyed the video, as always, make sure to hit the like button, leave a comment, and subscribe to stay up to date on future videos. Uh, you can also check out my official blog over at seannell.com for all of my latest updates. And you can follow me on Facebook and Instagram as well for more daily tips. Uh, the links for that are also in the description box. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next video.